Hey, what's up YouTube? Pipe Noob here today. Uh, I wanted to share with you what I'm smoking today, uh, a few tips, and just chat with y'all. Miss y'all. So let's see, uh, you know, normally I uh, tend to smoke um, Virginias and Burleys and things like that. Uh, and I've done, uh, you know, these videos on you know, things like War Horse and, and what did I do last week? Um, I don't remember what I did last week. Uh, something. Whatever the hell it was. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a drugstore blend by any stretch. And I've talked a little bit about a few drugstore blends that I've tried that I like. Like Carter Hall and, or Carter Hall and uh, Prince Albert, which I both like a lot. Well, I got a bunch of um, uh, coupons from the Scandi Scandinavian Tobacco Group. They're the ones that make um, uh, Captain Black and, you know, all that other stuff. And the only one I could really find in the store to pick up that I had a coupon for was Bork and Riff, which I'm sure all of you have heard of, all of you have seen. Definitely not something I would normally smoke, but I went ahead and picked up a pouch, you know, just in the interest of science. And um, I'm uh, trying desperately to get through my second bowl of this now and thought I'd share my experiences with y'all. You can probably imagine what my review is going to be like based upon that previous statement. But let's, let's talk about Borkham Riff a little while. Borkham Riff is, uh, it's listed as a 35% Black Cavendish and 65% um, Virginia, topped with Kentucky Bourbon Whiskey. At least the, the I have the Bourbon Whiskey one. Um, it's, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pouch. It's, uh, you can see it from outside, you can see it. Uh, you can't really see it that well. Oh, let's see. So it's your standard, standard ribbon cut. Um, now normally I like black Cavendish. Of course I like Virginia. Uh, let's talk about this one though. Uh, this is a, an old drugstore blend, been around for a long time. And I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I don't like it. Um, the second bowl is better than the first one because I learned something from smoking the first one. So maybe you can consider this a PSA. Uh, let's, tell, let's talk about why I thought I might like it and why I actually don't like it. Um, I thought I might like it because I like whiskey. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I do. I drink and I know things. I like whiskey a lot. Uh, I'm not really a bourbon drinker. Um, I like rye. I like, uh, I like most brown liquors. I drink a hell of a lot of scotch. So I like whiskey. So whiskey flavored things I tend to really like. This is not a whiskey flavored thing. There's clearly on a pouch. Um, flavor notes. Kentucky bourbon whiskey. No. Sorry. Doesn't. Barely even smells of whiskey. Now, the condition of the tobacco when I got it, it was probably just about perfectly dry. Um, it's not overly dry. It's not crispy. It's not it's not moist by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't the point where I needed to um, uh, you know, set it out to dry. I've smoked a little bit of Captain Black in the past. I'm sure most of y'all probably have too. I mean, yeah, Captain Black, Captain Black tends to come just a little bit on the wet side. You set it out and let it dry for a little while. This I would not. This is this is just about the right the right um, um, moisture level. Problem started right from the initial pack. I packed it normally, just like I always do, and it didn't draw for shit. Uh, no matter, I mean, I packed it fairly light, but it still, it just seized up and clumped up in the bowl and was like a solid plug of tobacco. So, I ended up repacking it, tried it again, got it to where I could at least get some draw out of it, and then I got no flavor. None. Um, I got hot smoke, and that's it. I'm not tasting the Virginia. I get maybe a tiny little bit of sweet from the Black Cavendish. It's really hard to not get sweet from the Black Cavendish. I get no, none of that supposed Kentucky bourbon whiskey. Now, so I, I worked my way through the first bowl and it smoked hot, hot as shit. I mean, it was really fucking hot. And I smoked it slow, sipped, retrohaled, nothing. I waited a little while, let my the bowl of my falcon cool down. 
Um, went, did some errands, came back, figured I'd shoot a video and tell you all about it, give you a PSA. Don't smoke this shit, right? Don't smoke this shit. In fact, you know, that's not fair. I always give stuff, you know, at least two or three tries. So I fired up another bowl. This one I pack really loose. I mean, this is far looser than I normally normally pack. I mean, it's you know, it's the general guideline is it's like you're sipping through a straw. Well, this is I'm not even sipping through a straw. I mean, it's really loose. And so now I'm getting some flavor. I'm still not getting flavor of whiskey. I sure as hell wouldn't place this as whiskey. But I'm a pretty experienced whiskey drinker. So, but I am getting some some flavor out of it. I'm not really getting flavor from the Virginia. I can definitely taste the black Cavendish now, but in my mind, I would have been just as, you know, just as well off, you know, buying just a generic black Cavendish blend, and it probably would have had more flavor than this. It's still smoking hot, damn hot, not as hot as it did before. So the the trick to this seems to be to pack it looser than you normally would. Um, and now with it packed really loose. I'm not having nearly as hard a time keeping it lit. But again, I stress, this is way, way looser pack than I than I normally use. So my anyway, my this this to me hits all the bells of why I don't recommend aromatics for people, especially noobs. Because you get this you get this pouch, you know, off the off the shelf and it's like oh it tastes like whiskey i like whiskey oh yeah oh it smells a little bit like whiskey that doesn't really but oh it smells good then you put it in your pipe and it's hot and it's burning your tongue and it's burning your mouth and you're not getting any flavor out of it and you're like why the fuck did i pick up this stupid ass hobby in the first place oh by the way did i mention there seems to be absolutely no nicotine kick to this at all now i'm not a nicotine junkie but i do like a little bit of the vitamin n i'm not getting anything out of this one so, anyway, my, uh, my PSA for this, give it a pass. Um, there are some over-the-counters that are really good. Uh, I've been around for a very long time. Uh, you know, my my, uh, my man crush on Carter Hall and uh, my, my appreciation of Prince Albert. Give this one a pass. Okay, well, now that we've talked more about tobacco than I normally do, or I thought of a I thought of a tip after I shot uh, last week's video. Um, what was I smoking? Um, I don't remember what the last one, last one was about, uh, but I do remember it had a, a fairly significant nicotine kick. And uh, I was sitting outside know, a day or two ago, and I was working and I was working on some paperwork. And I'm just pounding away on on some client documentation and working back and forth with, with a couple of my managers and we're just, you know, we're doing some stuff and I'm just puffing bowl after bowl and all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, shit, I'm dizzier than hell. This stuff's got a hell of a nicotine kick after a while. You know, you built up a couple bowls of it and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, you stand up and you're like a little bit lightheaded. You sit down and you're like, uh, you got eyes rolling back in the back of your head. I'll tell you how to, how to fix that. Because I don't know about you, but for me, that's an uncomfortable feeling. And I learned this trick when I was smoking cigars, because I like strong cigars, really, really strong cigars. So I went into the house, I got a sugar cube. I ate the sugar cube. Boom. That will kill your nicotine buzz almost instantly. Other trick you can do is have a sweet drink, uh, a soda. You just got to have real sugar. None of this uh, diet crap. The diet crap, you may like the taste of it. I don't. But um, it won't kill the nicotine buzz. It's the sugar that kills the nicotine buzz. So a glass of sweet tea, a glass of juice, uh, a soda with you know regular sugar in it. The corn syrup will work too, but I recommend you know like a Mexican Coke or something like that, or uh, yeah, Bailey's and coffee. You know, you know whatever, whatever floats your boat. But something that's got some sugar in it, or just a little bit of you know bite a sugar cube. You know, eat up a sugar cube real quick. Uh, that's my tip for the day. Um, I don't really have any uh, fun stories to share today other than that, but I definitely wanted to get this PSA out about uh, Borkham Riff bourbon whiskey. Mm, give it a pass. And um, how to kill that nicotine buzz. So, uh, and I'm almost at 90 subscribers. I was looking at that. I just got a new subscriber. So, welcome aboard. And I think I'm at 89 now. I'm like, wow, wow, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm trying to think of so, something I might do for 100 subscribers. I know some guys out there have like 40,000 subscribers and I'm just in awe that I'm you know closing in on 100. 
So um, I might do something goofy for for my hundred subscribers uh, when I when I hit that mark. Uh, if you you know if you got any ideas, um, put it down there at the bottom. Uh, I'll I'll take any suggestions that you know as long as they're not illegal, immoral, or unethical. Um, of course, then I might, might consider those. Um, but uh, uh, let me know you know let me know your opinions down there. Uh, this is supposed to be sort of two way interactive. I appreciate you all's time. Uh, I just passed ten minutes. So I'm gonna let this go. Happy Easter to you all, um, and uh, God bless you all, everyone. Have a great day, YouTube.